to the talk. I think so that listen to yes sir another two minutes will be starting i have got it uh, live on uh, youtube sir okay okay running live now hi sridhar 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 sir on unmute pannu sir sridhar sir muted sir mute panta like audio sir idhe enna sir pudhu style hai <laughs> Just I was having, I removed it. Eh? I was having for one month and I removed it. Ah, uh, just <laughs> I started doing it because you removed it. I started doing. That's that. Yeah. Uh, both of us can't have it. Next to see, see there. Yeah. Right now. That the last time, the last time you left a little early. Yeah. I'm asking you your opinion. Okay, okay. Now come on, let us. Jahar. But DK, sir, it takes uh, the speakers to get connected, huh? Yeah, it's connected. Oh, yes. Sir, talking, yeah. Yeah, now we are ready, sir. Six o'clock. Shall we start, sir? Sir, Subramanian, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. yeah. You okay. can. The first speaker is also there. Shyam is there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So before we go in, I would like to make the formal uh, introduction. I'll just introduce the speaker, sir, and then yeah. uh, I'll hand over the session to you. Yeah, great, great. Good evening, everyone, to the next session of the STEP program, Star Teachers in Plastic Surgery, the next generation, the new web series. The motto of this program is to learn, to contribute, and to encourage. So welcome again to the fifth episode of season one. Here, the first session will be a talk on patient specific craniofacial prosthetic implants and the speaker will be dr shamnath pandian he has done his mch plastic surgery from madras medical college from 2010 to 2013 he is now a junior consultant plastic and reconstructive surgery department the icaps that is the institute of craniofacial aesthetic and plastic surgery at the SRM Institutes for Medical Sciences, Badaparani, Chennai, the Sims Hospital. His fields of interest are craniofacial reconstructive surgery, microvascular reconstructive surgery, hand injury management, burns, and diabetic foot management. And to moderate this session, we have Dr. Subramanya here. He is the clinical professor. He doesn't need any introduction, but still. He is the clinical professor and head, Center for Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, Amrita Advanced Center for Robotic Surgery and Center for Head and Neck Surgery and Oncology, Surgical Oncology, Composite Tissue Allotransplantation and Ear Reconstruction. We are very happy to have you with us, sir, to moderate both the sessions today. I hand over to you for moderating the first session. Great. Uh... Thank you, Kapiya. For uh, I think uh, first of all, let me uh, congratulate uh, the concept of this program because it's uh, slightly different, and this is what we expect uh, 
you know, these are the things which we have to do to encourage people to come out and talk about the, the, the next uh, generation people to come out and talk on uh, various aspects. So it's, it's an extremely well-conceived program. Congratulations to you for Thank that. You. And then, so let us start off uh, with the first talk. And then as uh, it has been mentioned, uh, we will listen to the talk and then we'll go on to the discussion of this talk and go to the second talk, okay? Yeah, that should be okay. So shall we start off with the first talk? Yeah, Shyam. Please. Yeah. Um, you have to enable my... Uh, yes, one minute, one minute, uh, just. Yeah. Yep, it's on. You can share your screen now. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening, all. Um, patient specific craniofacial implants are tailor made to specific defects. I'll be presenting today our series of uh, five patients. And I am Dr. Shyamnath, consultant plastic surgeon at Sims Hospital, Badaduni. Now let us look at these examples. These are two different cases. One is a case of uh, saddle nose deformity. The other is a case of micrognathia. For a 3 correction like this, ready-made processes are available. They are just like plug and play and they may not need be customized or if at all, little customization may be required. But when we have complex composite 3D defect, uh, defect the, it is very difficult to use standard implants because the defects vary. So our protocol in managing this patients are with the pre-op CT images, followed by a virtual surgical planning, a 3D pre-operative model, a trial implant if necessary and a mock surgery, custom prosthesis and last intraoperative imaging if required. Now, let me start with this patient. He is a 30 year old man. He is a victim of RTA in March 2016 and he sustained head injury. He was treated initially elsewhere in a neurosurgical center and subsequently in a plastic surgery center, he underwent the emergency decompression craniotomy followed by uh, secondary procedures. And uh, when he came back to us after four or five months after the injury, he had a well-settled graft over the uh, forehead, over the scalp, uh, with the huge crater-like deformity over the forehead. And uh, the supraorbital rim is, uh, definition is lost. He has thysis bulbae, he has lost his globe and the sagging midface. Now, when we look at his 3D CT, we are really amazed to see because there is a huge loss in the temporal bone. The eye globe is shattered. Uh, there is compound and uh, there is commutated fracture of the zygomatico maxillary complex. And you can see well appreciated in this uh, 3D CT. Now, what we did is a virtual surgical planning to assess the defect. We use the concept of uh, mirror image uh, what I mean is we use the normal side and uh, we mirror it to the defect so that what we left out is uh, we reconstructed the defect and what the implant requirement we assessed. So we wanted a huge implant like this to reconstruct this. So we de decided to reconstruct in stages, the forehead or the frontal bone first, followed by the zygomatico maxillary complex. Now the problem we faced then is what is the implant material we are going to use? We tried titanium plates, but then uh, in 2016, it was very costly and it is, um, the patient could not afford, he being a fisherman. So we came back to the conventional titanium plates, but the problem is maladaptation. Always it tends to adapt, uh, improper adaptation is the cause. So what we did is we wanted to pre-bend it before surgery. So we, over the 3D uh, printed model, we took a wax impression. That wax impression is transferred onto a silicon impression and a die stone is formed. Over the die stone, the titanium plate is uh, pre-molded. 
This is confirmed in the mock surgery and we went ahead for surgery. In the procedure, the exposure is obtained through the previous scar and a residual uh, skin graft is excised. And the, after placing the mesh, the wound is covered with the transposition flap from the scalp also. And this is this post-op six months later, you can see the contour deformity got corrected. Now, late in 2017, FDA issued a guidance for industry for uh, production of uh, this titanium material. Following this, uh, we were able to manufacture titanium. Even in Chennai, they were able to customize implants. After this, this patient came for second sitting last year. So when we took a 3D CT, you can see a beautifully settled titanium mesh with the little or acceptable contour. Now, what we wanted to do, we are worried about the zygomatic maxillary complex. So we removed all these things, recreated the defect virtually, and uh, created an implant. Now, using this, we wanted a trial implant. When we looked at this trial implant, we realized that it is of good contour, but the size is large. With this size, it, it, it will be difficult for placement. So what we decided is to divide these implants, the same British rule, divide and rule. We divide, divided these implants into three parts. The first part, which is green in color, it has holes for fixation into the temporal bone. This is the lateral orbital wall, the frontosegmatic suture area, and the, the infraorbital rim and the arch, the zygoma body per se, we divided into three. And we ordered that. We got an implant like this. And we customized this implant this way. We went in for surgery. We used the same nasolabial scar, which he had uh, because of his previous injury. To, uh, and through that exposure, it gave an adequate exposure to place this implant in pieces. And this is he. This is how he came to us. This is immediate post-op after the second surgery, two and a half years down the line. And uh, this is he in his lateral view. This uh, image was taken two days back and he forwarded to me. And you can see the saggingness of the mid face is gone. The contour correction has settled well. The eyes are at the same level. Now the hard, uh, uh, the bony reconstruction work is over. Now all we need to put in a shell and a frontal sling for the eyelid. Now, let me go to the second case. This is a case of uh, osteomeningioma. He's operated twice or thrice for the meningioma of the forehead from 1994. And uh, you can see here, his entire frontal bone has eroded. The roof of the orbit is eroded, causing a proptosis of the eye. And uh, we were called in for reconstruction. We used a porous polyethylene implant, which is pre-shaped. We customized it. Like, like, like uh, planning in reverse is done, then the roof of the orbit is reconstructed with half of the implant and covered, the cranial vault is covered with the rest. The skin is re-draped re then. We, are, we faced with a small complication here in the form of an exposed uh, implant. We went in through the same bicoronal incision. We shaved off the exposed part and the rotation flap to cover the defect. He settled well. Now, this is case three. She is a case of left uh, maxillary CA, she carcinoma. She underwent surgical excision elsewhere and the, reconstructed with a free ALT flap cover. She has completed her radiotherapy. She's an international patient. She, on the way back, back her home, she came to us asking us to uh, rehabilitate her oral cavity for dental rehabilitation, basically. We took a 3D CT and we found there is a huge defect. We offered a fibula, uh, free, free fibula graft again to reconstruct the bony uh, defect, which will support uh, her dentition. But uh, she refused that. So we had a discussion with the dental surgeon and we found we want what his uh, expectation is. He wanted anterior support and the posterior support for the dental arch. Um, the anterior support he was planning is to take over the central incisors. He does not want an obturator kind of support because 
of this, she has a very well settled ALT flap. There is no fistula. The all he needs is a dental support from the posterior support from the posterior part. So we gave a customized zygoma implant, dental implant into the zygoma. With this, he was able to um, create a frame, framework. On the on top of the framework, he was able to fix a crown. Now, do we have a reference for this? Yes, it is published in the internal uh, in the International Journal of Oro Maxillary Facial Surgery in 2011 as a single case report, and uh, we are also in the process of writing the same. Now he's a he's a 22 year old boy who came with the progressive uh, atrophy of one side of the face or Ombud's disease was diagnosed. Uh, we did the 3D printing of the facial soft tissue to assess the volume. And the same mirror image principle is used here. Intraoperatively, you, you can see this is the single piece, but actually the required augmentation is over the cheek as well as the mandible. So we went in and augmented with the porous polyethylene implant using this technique, we were able to identify the exact location where we wanted to place the implant. This acted as a guide and it gave us a desired result. Now she is an interesting case to us. She is 22 years old and she is she weighed only 30 kgs. Looking at her, we can uh, look at her. We can say that she is a case of craniofacial microsomia. You can see. She has a, a um, microtic ear, a low set eyes, low set eyes, and deviation of the angle of uh, the deviation of the mandible. Now, when we went into the history a little more, she has undergone almost six surgeries before coming to our hospital. Starting from the age of five till the age of eighteen, she has undergone six surgeries. And uh, the family uh, lost hope on surgeries. Now, what are all the surgeries performed? At six years, she has undergone costochondral graft for reconstruction of the mandible. Subsequently, she has undergone uh, a free fibula to augment the mandible at the age of 14 years. Then uh, gap arthroplasty, TMJ ankylosis, everything was uh, really, every surgery did not give a result. What result we want? mouth opening. She doesn't have a mouth opening at all. She is only 30 kgs and you can see the dental atresia on the left side, on the normal side, she has 0.5 centimeters of mouth opening and she's feeding herself with this. Now we did a 3D CT to assess the status. You can see a well settled fibula flap here, but what, what it has done, it has ankylosed with the skull base. What else you can see? A low set ear, low set eye, there is absent zygoma, and there is no external auditory meatus. There is no canal at all. So the middle ear is poorly developed. So this is the picture. And uh, we wanted to do something for her. Um, either there are only a few options we discussed. Finally, what we did is this thing a TM joint replacement. What, how we uh, uh, came to this conclusion? A TM joint, this joint is not for a joint creation. This is for a replacement joint. In other words, a normal joint patient who has developed TMJ arthritis, if they develop the severe TMJ arthritis, this joint is meant for them. That joint we have used here to create a TM joint, or in other words, a TM joint reconstruction. This we used, uh, the uh, difficulties we faced is position of the glenoid fossa. You can see SML is the small and R for right. This is from the one of the Orthomax company, which is available. Now, what is this is the glenoid fossa and what it is the titanium uh, plate. This size doesn't vary. This matches for everyone. And whereas this vertical height, the ramus height varies. So we used one of the smallest one. What is this material made up of? This is 
ultra high molecular weight polyethylene which withstands the pressure 15 times the abrasive forces are, it can withstand is 15 times more than the conventional steel now intraoperatively after osteotomy of the fibula we are able to achieve mouth opening of 3 cm once we achieved that we uh, went through this we preserved uh, a good amount of soft tissue around the joint to prevent the joint from subluxating because there are no muscles to hold in position. So we maintained the soft tissue and we fixed the vertical uh, part to the uh, mandible and the joint is reconstructed. Now this is she post-op. This is her mouth opening which we achieved and this is she. Two days back she has sent this video and uh, you can see her uh, masticatory function is normal, good mouth opening. Thanks all. Wish you all a happy Krishna, Krishna Jayanti. Thank you from Thank, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sham, uh, for the excellent sort of presentation and, and uh, excellent cases, in fact. Um, can I? Yeah. Can you stop sharing? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, um, let me see if there is any questions that has come through. Has any questions come through, Kartike? No? Yes, sir. I have asked a question. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That was... Um, Custom-made implants are perfectly designed. When you put it into body, is there any chance of malalignment? And if so, how do you avoid it? Yes. Right, Shyam. Yes, sir. Uh, the customization, uh, everything depends on planning, sir. If we yeah. plan uh, using the mirror image, you may not have most of the time any problem. But uh, as you rightly pointed out, there may be some sort of 2 mm difference, 3 mm difference will be there, which you have to accept, sir. In my experience, at least. Right, yeah. Uh, sir, Sridhar, sir. Yeah. Uh, I think I would like to budge in here for yeah, sure, what uh, Kathikeyan asked. Yeah. Definitely, we have to do a uh, mock surgery, in which case, most of the time, we are able to do it properly. But even in this case of PMJ, there was a slight discrepancy. Therefore, what we had to do is, we have to move it little forward. So that amount of two millimeter, instead of accepting, first you will have to try whether you can adjust it. That is moving it little two millimeter, if it is required, move it forward or backward. That is possible. And the excision of the fibula, or in this case particularly, both of us only did, Shyam and I, uh, we have to be conservative in the excision first because more you exercise, you get into a problem. You exercise less and then put it and see so the error will be much less. I think that is the way you have to plan in this case. The remaining cases again, the same. Already now we have got an implant in our hand. Maybe when you are removing little more bone, you be conservative. Keep fitting it and seeing, fitting it and seeing and then excise rather than excise the whole thing together. But in the case of malignancy that doesn't arise, you have to do it in one sitting. Yeah, um, I would say, see, uh, the main issue would come when, you know, you have the virtual surgical planning and you have the cutting guide and then resection cutting guide and then the planning guide. That is the norm for, uh, in many centers for, uh, the mandibular reconstruction in a way, you know, you can have the cutting guide for even the fib for the fibula and then put it there. There, the main problem which occurs will be because of it is a malignancy or if it is an ameloblastoma, it might be fine. In a malignancy, because of operative change, changes occur in the planning. Then everything bigs, uh, goes a bit heavier. So that is an inherent problem with the 
uh, you know, this type of uh, implants planned for a malignancy. But as uh, Shyam showed, uh, these cases like uh, cranial, cranial vault and all those things give some leeway for even if it is slightly, uh, you know, in a, in a uh, problematic, you can have it. And as uh, Sridhar sir said, rightly, the way would be to avoid or under resect everywhere and then shape, you know, remove that uh, uh, extra bit of bone to fit in that, uh, the, the, the implant at that time. But uh, Sham, you, have you been doing uh, implants for other things like uh, mandible? Yes, or, sir. Yeah. Yeah, our unit, be re, uh, we are doing for uh, cancer re reconstruction, amyloblastomas. So are you doing a custom-made one or are you uh, just uh, looking at a usual plate and then, you know, virtual? I, I agree that it will be model-based. You must be doing everything model-based. Yes, but sir. do you do custom-made uh, custom implants for the mandible? No, not yet, sir. We are up about to start uh, that, sir. Now, uh, uh, Karthikeyan, can I just show one slide? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. I, I, will, I will just open. Yes, uh, see, this is a hastily made, uh, you know, this uh, slide I got just now. Uh, this is from Chennai only. We, uh, I, I, let me share my screen. Uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me go back. You can say, uh, let me share my screen, yeah. You can see my screen, no? Yes, sir, yes, sir we can. Okay, now uh, let me just, uh, this is, see, it is not a, a arranged slide. I just got it today from uh, our colleagues. See, look at this one. This is a amyloblastoma. Uh, you know, uh, just, just, uh, it's an amyloblastoma, right? And this is a model made and this is a resection. And this is the custom made implant that has been made for the patient, you know, with the joint, with the joint. And then you can see this is a tray and you look at it, there is the fibula is placed slightly high here. So in, in order to prevent, uh, you know, that uh, height difference for the implant, the, the, plate has been made slightly uh, solid here. It's not heavy weight. And then uh, this is the way it will fit. And this is the way it has been done. This is a case which we did. And one more I'll just show you. Uh, this is again, uh, I just want to show that custom made implants can be possible. See this is another one, same, same one. You can have two uh, fragments and this is the, this is the way the implant would look like. And this is the, uh, this is the patient after that. Now, uh, let, me, let me come out. See, this was made in Chennai, Chennai. This implant was made in Chennai. Um, oh, let me. Uh, you can just click on the stop share. Sir. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now I have stop share. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Screen your share. I'll I'll just uh, uh, it is sharing my screen again. Let me. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's okay. Now, uh, uh, the why I showed that one, this was, this is made in Chennai. Yes, we, we send it to, there is, uh, I don't want to advertise that guy, but he is the dental guy who, uh, Johnson, uh, who we have been doing the joints with him. So the beauty is that striker plate costs around uh, 45,000 now, around with the screws. And this will cost about sixty to seventy thousand, but you have the join. But the, if you look, ask, uh, I'm sure Dr. Sridhar will tell that uh, the other joints, like uh, 
the big big joints which you get uh, are extremely expensive so i am not going to take out the uh, thing from shyam you know let us go back to shyam and this one but i just want to say that custom made implants will be one of the things which we have to look at and master and you know there are a lot of people will be ready to make it for you so i would say patient specific implants are to stay and then that will be the one which you will be using more and more in future uh, the zygomatic implant what we did is from chennai made i think the same guy who made it for you John, johnson sir is it his name is uh, what is it huh? no i'll tell you sir let me let yeah. me look at that yeah is uh, the dental guy no yeah yeah, yeah uh, dental guy the same they are very good extremely good and we have a maxilla facial surgeon with us yeah uh, so uh. suresh is there with us yeah yeah is and uh, there yeah. is one question in the chat box again yeah from dr gautam biswas sir gautam ah okay he can custom made implants for mobile structures such as mandible frequently is true shyam extrusion i think uh, the question is not a custom made implants any implant will extrude correct so you tell me shyam tell uh, dr uh, uh, you know uh, gautam your views on extrusion shyam shyam is muted shyam shyam unmuted yeah i want i want muted <laughs> okay your yeah. views on extrusion uh, on any implants extended. any implants custom made is it more or any any implants yeah Material. custom made it is less actually sir i would take that okay. way because the soft tissue draping over the custom made implants are good and uh, i the tension on the skin is less whereas in uh, regular implants ready made implants which are tailor uh, tailorly cut uh, the chances of uh, exposure is little high okay we have one case and i have shown it to you oh you showed that exposure no yes sir yeah. yes sir yeah uh, material wise are you happy with the indian material which is being custom made yes sir we yeah. uh, the custom made which we used uh, is uh, as shridhar has said from cetars 3d chennai ah cetars yeah correct correct cetars yeah. yeah. uh, there uh, this thing is uh, very very good actually in the zygoma implant they uh, for the profile i yeah. checked them how uh, how they match the profile they said they compared with the opposite zygoma the okay. thickness of the bone and they decide on the uh, this uh, implants profile yeah. so that that way i think it is very good yeah great yeah okay and this yeah. Two, let me see yeah one more question umar uh, yeah the details okay uh, container implants with reconstruction plates to have it is dr narayana murthy container implants with reconstruction plates are said to have higher complication rates how better are these custom made implants with condylar processes see he is talking about the routine condylar plates you know we all used to have this condylar plates which used to be there and how is it different from your condylar processes the condylar plates uh, we may not get the glenoid fossa sir actually the glenoid fossa is the place where uh, the problem comes with the condylar plates the okay. second thing is improper fitting of the condylar plates the pre plating and the pre bending may not properly sit whereas in custom made one uh, where you get adequate uh, uh, i mean uh, pre pre bended to the defect and in that way they take the load better also and the glenoid fossa here are made of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene which i already mentioned in my presentation that takes up the load whereas in conventional plating system with condylar implants they don't get this glenoid fossa that creates the problem um, yeah i fully agree sham to what you said about the glenoid component uh, 
And again, if you uh, remember what Dr. Sridhar said about the vertical height, you know the problem with the previous condylar plates, there is no control. You just have a plate, you have to accept it. Whatever height is that, it is that you get. And then it doesn't really sit in the place where the condyle is supposed to sit. And so it might be in the soft tissue, there is no comp uh, this thing. Here, as you rightly said, it is custom made to fit the glenoid cavity you are making or you are recreating, which makes a lot of difference. So I think that will answer uh, Dr. Narayanamurthy's question that uh, condylar implants and condylar plates, I don't think anybody, anybody, I would, I would uh, discount that as a simple waste of time in a way. Uh, any, I don't know anybody has, uh, Dr. Sridhar, uh, anybody has opinion on that? The previous condylar plates which, uh, which you used to have. I have used it before, olden days. Yeah. And the one case I am following it up for 18 years now, there is no problem. Right, sir. But that is the only case which I have followed it up for that many years. This I was a benign, benign case? Yeah, it's an amyloblastoma. Okay. It was an amyloblastoma still. It is good maintaining, but it usually gives rise to problem. Was so, there a, any bone, bone with that or just the plate? Just the plate. Just the plate, okay. Yeah, I think... So way just, back again, so at that time, even before fibula became the gold standard, yeah. what I was telling, at that time we were putting ribs. Right, we yeah. Putting yeah. rib, we decided, I decided to put a condyla plate. Yeah. Sir, all of us have got uh, sort of one, one or two or uh, the thing about the plates working without any problem, but it cannot be suggested as a standard of care. It cannot be. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, to share the con. Okay, that that we'll get it. Uh, the okay. It was Narendra Murthy saying that the question was answered. So there is um, no more questions here. Anything else you uh, want to? Can I just ask a question, sir? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Now, for a lot of people, this is a new concept. I mean, we've heard of it, but this seems to be a new concept. This 3D virtual surgical planning for the yeah. craniofacial defects. Yeah. Can we ask Dr. Shyam to enumerate the steps when the patient comes in? What are the steps we go through before we get the process and get the surgery going? And during the surgery, what are the basic steps that we need to concentrate on? Shyam. Yes, sir. Uh, so as soon as a patient comes in and if we uh, ask for a 3D CT scan, and in particular, we ask for 1mm cuts. In our CT requestation form itself, we will write it as 1mm cuts. Seeing that the radiologist takes a CT with 1mm cuts and he gives back to us in the CD in a DICOM format. And that is uploaded in the, in the system to the uh, our um, 3D printer who is uh, who does virtual surgical planning with us. And it's a telecommunication. We sit in front of computer with the camera and he shares his screen and whatever we asked him to uh, ask him to do with the, his suggestions with his computer knowledge he imparts on that and uh, it, it is uh, like a half an hour to one hour process and step by step we uh, supposing it let it be for a uh, example this case um, the first case which i saw which i showed for the zygoma we recreated the defect by removing all the malunited and comminuted fracture bones. Then he mirror imaged the opposite zygomatico maxillary complex. He reversed it and he reattached it. Uh, maybe in, in the initial days, it was difficult for him to understand. He being a non-medical person, we found it little difficult. But as time progressed, he adapted to us. And uh, he, whenever we does uh, do a mirror image, he will do it within five seconds. Before his computer thinks, he will do that. And uh, the final thing, he will give it in the form of a trial implant. If we ask for it, we ask for a trial implant. Then uh, that trial implant, we will see along with our 3D model. 
and if the fitting is uh, good then we go for it uh, to ask him to give the regular uh, titanium implant now in this case as i clearly showed shridhar sir uh, was there in the discussion and he said he, uh, he's the one who suggested that the pocket creation will be difficult the soft tissue draping over the implant is going to be difficult if you are going to use a, such a large implant so he came with the idea of divide and rule divide that this thing into three so such customization after that customization can be done even uh, i am taking this case alone as an example so that it is clear for mandible also we do so and uh, we still even go ahead uh, in our uh, fibular implant as uh, in dr vishnu babu's presentation he mentioned about the uh, primary osseo integration and uh, that that person marks where exactly if we put our uh, osseo integrated implants will share will take more weight so in more and more we do more and more refinement we get sir and all these things he gives in 3d model and we can use it as uh, isr said uh, about the cutting guide which will be help which we of which will be of uh, very great help and uh, off late when i when i was talking to these guys sitars they wanted us to do one of our cases waiting in which we asked for a double barrel fibula and he said uh, he can give a pre bending of the plate like a snake he wanted to make 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 the contact in the upper half and for the lower half he wanted to bend the plate down and uh, it's a good thing going on sir and we will get the virtual 3d model that helps us and uh, we use that model with the eto gas sterilized we use it in the theater okay yeah great um uh see i think institutions which have workload i think uh, rakesh has it uh, in medanta we have it in amrita our own lab now with uh, uh, you have the uh, software and you have the printer and then uh, to have a 3d model printed with uh, you know these things but the problem that up to that is very good but beyond that you need a technical help like these people because metal bending metal printing is an extremely expensive thing so that part i think we will have to depend upon these people but if people are interested uh, institutions should have their own you know trained people themselves and so that Uh, major mainly most of this uh, you know surgical planning can be in house in much better way but i'm sure the patient specific implants we will have to depend upon the other people but that will be much more in a ni nicely done if you do it but that might be the future see again we may have some we may have to have uh, uh, in house labs and all those things we have to think of that way in future sir can i ask a question now yeah. uh, you have said it is it's going to be something of the future yeah. do you envisage a time when it will become a routine uh, I, procedure you and look, what will bring about that look gathing uh, now if you look at it uh, why do you want to have a striker plate bent you have a striker plate we i see we have a, we had a mandibular reconstruction today which uh, we just the bend the plate now uh, that bending of the plate and all those things takes time and that cost is also reasonably quite high striker plate and screws cost around 30 to 40000 now but if you have a patient specific bent plate given to you at the same cost what will i choose because it's just to fit there take it you put the fibula in the leg itself in the plate and fit it it will fit there so why do you want to waste your time so that is why i said ultimately it will be all patient specific implants when it is available and is being done and even the striker and synthesis will come down with the cost for their patient specific implant you just provide them they will have to give it to you some stage okay can i have my question sir yeah see this is like you know i remember now for the breast implant to prevent the extrusion 
Yeah. We use A cellular dermis. Yes, sir. Cover yeah. the implant. Yeah, yeah. Any of you have thought about it to cover the implant with A cellular dermis so that we can prevent your uh, extrusion of the implant? Any suggestion on that or any view on that? Very logical idea, sir. I would rather say. Very logical idea. Very good idea. Excellent idea, sir. We'll, uh, we have not used it anyway. But uh, it, the, the, this is thought-provoking. We will definitely consider that, sir. Very yeah. good. Sir, sir, yes, the material. It's available. It's available abroad. You have to get it. Yes. Then, uh, I don't know. It's for future. Again, it's for future, sir. People have been reporting that in a big way. The acellular dermis yeah. in a way. But it's again... Acellular dermis. Yeah. Our okay. Im implant cost itself is deterring us. So when the cost of this acellular dermis is now added, it might be difficult. That is one, one reason we might be uh, we might not be doing much. Anyway, but concept day, is right, sir. Right. Concept is right. Yeah. Right. Worth trying. Thank you. Excellent. Sir, can we go to the next session? Yeah, then? we will go. Yeah. I'll just introduce the next speaker. Sure. So the next uh, session is on, the talk is on mid-phase and carcinoma tongue reconstruction. And the speaker is going to be Dr. Hari Krishna. It's a coincidence that today being Krishna Janmashtami, we have two people. The first one is Shamnath Krishna Pandian, and we have Dr. Hari Krishna. And uh, he's done his dipendi from plastic surgery from Apollo First Med Hospital, Chennai, and finished in 2015. He is a consultant plastic surgeon at Apollo Specialty Hospital, OMR, Prashant Super Specialty Hospital, Velacheri, and an associate consultant plastic surgeon at Apollo Cancer Institute, Tenampet, Chennai, with Dr. Shivram Bharadwaj and Dr. Anthony Arvin. His fields of interest are onco reconstruction, hand surgery, microvascular, and microneural surgery. And our uh, moderator for this session also will be Dr. Subramanya Iyer. Over to you, sir. Okay, Hari Krishnan. Yeah, we'll just uh, start off. I think this uh, very interesting topic, two, two big topics, I would say, both uh, mid-phase as well as tongue are controversial and uh, quite uh, interesting topics. Let us see what Hari has to talk to us first. Hari Krishna, Krishnan? you can share your screen. You have to unmute yourself, Hare Krishna. Yeah, you're can on. You us? Yeah. Okay. You can hear on. Yeah. Are you able to see, sir? Yes, we are able to see. Yeah, sure. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. My topic I've chose was uh, tongue reconstruction. Specifically, I'll be speaking on what we are doing in our institute using a anterolateral type lab, which are suprafacial double paddled uh, type lab. So my other, uh, I am associated with the group along with my other members are Dr. Anjani Arvind, Dr. Rajan and Dr. Shivram Bharadwaj. So tongue reconstruction, when it comes, the main aim is to restore the form by providing adequate shape and volume. And the next, uh, pro after providing the form by shape and volume, the next one follows with the function so that the patient should have intelligible speech, adequate uh, swallowing and mastication, masticatory function. So how we can achieve this function will be by speech or by swallowing. Swallowing with the tongue being a three-dimensional muscular organ, the total tongue is lost, you need a muscular movement to provide a movement for the reconstructed tongue that can be achieved with free functioning muscle transfer. 
But if you need a salivate, salivatory component, we can go for gastrointestinal flaps like gastromental flaps. So when it comes to restore the shape by giving adequate volume and uh, form, we can, you, in shape, you can have again the surface where we can create drops and peaks. And the, again, the other aspect is to provide the adequate volume or bulk for the reconstructed tongue. So when it, if you visualize the tongue in a 3D, three-dimensional uh, picture, it will have a lot of troughs and peaks which corresponds to the epithelial surface. So this is the cross section of the tongue where the green line is showing the total epithelial surface of the tongue in a longitudinal section, a horizontal section. So if you take the hemiglossectomy defect, considering uh, the, the right one as the defect, and we have moved from the reconstruction point of mood. Uh, every institute has been practicing microvascular preclaps for the tongue reconstruction to get uh, adequate results. So if we want to do a thin pliable flap, like a little forearm tooth flap, where we can get a thin and pliable skin, but uh, the adequate volume we cannot get. After reconstruction, you, you will see the, uh, the radial forearm flap will drop like this uh, without any bulk, but you can get a good oral seat. And after moving from radial forearm to anterolateral side flap, you can get the surface correct by providing adequate bulk. The ideal reconstruction should be providing the adequate surface area along with the bulk. So when compared with the radial forearm and ALP, the green line shows the radial forearm where bulk is not there. And the pink line which shows the ALT where adequate volume and surface is restored. But uh, three-dimensionally, we should be able to provide adequate surface area and also bulk to get the form function in uh, at, a, at a single point. So how we can do uh, this three-dimensional reconstruction by choosing an ALT flap, considering this as the skin surface along, we can all debulk de de the adipofacial fat, which is not necessary, and maintain adipofacial adipo adipo fat only at the perforator and the pedicle area, so that after inserting the flap, you can get adequate surface area and also required amount of bulk which is required. So, but this reconstruction is difficult to hold it in place because even though you have done a good reconstruction over a period of time, if you follow the patient because of post op to radiotherapy, the volume uh, will shrink uh, after some point of time because of radiotherapy. So like this case, which in the picture, we have taken a flap along with a little bit of uh, muzzle, anterolateral type flap, and reconstructed the hemiglossectomy defect. But the total surface area is much greater than the volume, which is required. So we are aiming towards improving the total surface area. Initially, we were doing thin flaps by radial forearm. Then we moved on to anterolateral type flaps, thicker flaps. Now we moved on to thin flaps, super thin flaps, taking uh, suprafacial anterolateral type flaps so that donor area morbidity is also reduced. So if you, if you see the cross section, the surface area is different for the dorsal surface and also for the ventral surface. So why we have to do like this as in this picture, this gentleman, even though the tongue has been reconstructed, the existing remaining tongue uh, is not able to, is not mobile because the reconstructed tongue, because of scarring and fibrosis, it is tethered and it is not allowing the remnant tongue to move or the patient did not, do not have any protrusion. But with the method which we follow, we have recreated the surface area and volume and this uh, gentleman can have his tongue protruded, which you can appreciate in this picture. And the difference uh, you can appreciate here, uh, there is no trunk protrusion, the tongue is tethered and scarred. And here, the 
he can adequately protrude the tongue out of the mouth. So I will show the cases which we are doing and how we are doing. This young uh, male, 26 years, who is a doctor by profession, uh, hemiglossectomy defect. So once the specimen is out, we wash the specimen uh, and this is the dorsal surface area of the tongue. This is the ventral surface area of the tongue. The, the original anatomy of the tongue itself, the anterior um, uh, half of the tip of the tongue will be thin. Posteriorly, it will be thick. Uh, as you can appreciate in the picture, the posterior half of the tongue is more thick. Anteriorly, it is thin. And so once after washing the specimen, we adequately uh, take the dimensions of the surfaces, both dorsum and ventral and uh, cut the patterns accordingly for the exact size. So we have cut the patterns, taking exact dimensions. So anterior, posterior, this goes to the medial half and lateral. And similarly, for the ventral surface, we have uh, taken the dimensions and pattern, posterior, anterior, medial, and lateral. This is the specimen with the two patterns side by side. So once the patterns are ready, we preoperatively Doppler the thigh and mark the perforators. Then we give exploratory incision and uh, elevate the skin flap suprafacially. Identify the perforators. Superficial dissection, I say it is not very easy, not very difficult, but to patiently and slowly do the dissection, you can identify good sizable perforators. But for young plastic surgeons who are Starting, it is better not to damage any of the perforators to keep all of them until you find a good sizable perforators. Once you have identified good sizable perforators, then you can proceed your dissection further through adiposal tissue till it pierces a deep fascia. Then you can cut the deep fascia and go up to the pedicle dissection. So here we have marked the two uh, skin paddles on the thigh and completed the dissection of harvesting two skin paddles along with the pedicle. Before detaching, when we checked the skin flap, the one skin paddle, the lower one, was bleeding mildly congested. So we were, we were little dicey whether to take the flap and uh, insert it and post -op it really, it will settle, should we think like that, or should we go ahead and do another flap? So then we come to conclusion that once before the patient leaves from operating theater table, the flap should be perfectly all right, it should be perfectly bleed. So then we discarded the flap which was congested, then we prepared other type and they similarly harvested another uh, uh, antelatal flap. So two uh, paddles from two types we have harvested and this is after inserting the flap, so dorsal surface are one, one skin paddle, uh, ventral surface we have inserted another skin paddle. This is almost after one and a half years of follow, uh, still adequate volume is maintained. The patient can uh, adequately protrude his tongue with a good intelligible speech. This is a immediate video which was taken post-operatively. Uh, second case, this is a total glossectomy defect. Again, uh, the dissected specimen, dorsal surface and ventral surface. Again, we have taken the patterns, uh, made, uh, taking dimensions exactly. And uh, uh, anteriorly, you can differentially harvest your flap, keeping anterior surface, anterior part of the flap thin. And posteriorly, you can maintain that bulk so that because the Posteriorly, the bulk which is required is very important for the liquids or the solids to direct the put bolus into the pharynx. And again, the ventral surface and take it the dimension and the templates, as you can see, they are resting 
on the receptor specimen. And this shaping of neo tongue will do before detaching the flaps on the thigh itself uh, with 30 white film. And apart from these two skin paddles, if you require an extra piece of bulk, uh, you, if, and if there is any other perforator available, based upon that perforator, you can take an, uh, another piece of adipofacial, adipofacial tissue, which you can keep it in between the flaps to provide the bulk. As you can see in the picture, these are very thin suprafacial flaps taken, two separate perforators for each of the paddle with single pedicle. So this is after inserting the flap, the dorsal surface and ventral surface, just the picture was taken just before pushing the tongue into the oral cavity. So this lady is a middle-aged lady. You can see the thickness of her thigh. It is almost from skin to deep fascia, it's almost three and a half centimeters. But if you see the the, our skin flaps, they are very thin, almost. So this is another case, hemiglossectomy. Uh, sometimes the resection can pass go through the retromolar tigone into the tonsil and into the lateral pharyngeal wall. So this is the resected specimen along with the neck nodes. So when you take the template of the both surfaces. We include an extension uh, on the ventral surface of the flap, this leafy extension, which goes into the, the uh, lateral pharyngeal or varicular area or consular area of where which is very precarious area. So that your flap should adequately sit in that area comfortably. If you don't have adequate flap sitting in that area, post-operatively, if that area gives, uh, gives away, or dehiscence, there will be salivary leak postoperatively, which will be a big mess, having neck infection, with flaky material on the major neck vessels, which can lead or go for a cavity blow. So this extension of the flap is very important. So in this patient, we are able to find good perforators both on this side, anterolateral side, and anteromedial side. So this can, and two flaps were taken based upon single pedicle. This is after reconstruction of the defect, dorsal and ventral surface. As you can see this, in this image, the extension of the of the flap on the ventral surface is gone past uh, retromolar trigone into the consular area to prevent any leakage of saliva into the neck. So this is the recent uh, image. The patient can uh, protrude his tongue out of the mouth, adequate volume and surface area is restored. And this is the speech. So he is able to read comfortably without any difficulty or facial grimacing and speech is able to understand the word. So for some words, he's having a little bit of slurry speech, but most of the speech he, he can understand. So another case uh, where hemiglossectomy with the marginal resection of the mandible was done. Sometimes if the mandible is also resected and if you are reconstructing the mandible with your fibula flap, the fibula flap skin paddle can go as a lining to the floor of mouth. And in those cases, we take an another flap but to reconstruct the tongue by two surfaces, from base, uh, take a flap from anterior level thigh, make, make the patterns dorsal surface and ventral surface. So in those cases, it will be double flap. In this case, because it is an only marginal mandible me, and the remaining mandible is intact. We have taken the patterns again, the, the dorsal surface, and again ventral surface with floor of mouth, with the extension going into the precarious area, which I was mentioning. As you can see, the line which was marked in the dorsal surface, from, from here, your flap can be uh, thin, uh, thin, and past this line posteriorly, you require the bulk to maintain the posterior part of the tongue. 
and these are the templates which are sitting on the receptor specimen, both dorsal and ventral surface. This is the flap which we harvested, dorsal surface and the ventral surface. And these are the two perforators going into the padding with single pedicle. This is after the inserting of the flap, dorsal surface and ventral surface. And this extension which is going uh, into the retromolar area is very important. So the flap should comfortably sit there to prevent any leaks post-operatively. So this traction suture is very important in the first 48 to 72 hours because the, the tongue being a mobile structure, the remnant of the tongue can move. And during regular uh, oral care, or patient when having violent cough, the tongue can move. And as these two skin pads are very thin and they can, they can be sharing action with this between the perforators and we have lost a uh, few flaps during our initial period because of uh, sharing action. So in all those cases, we have lost, we didn't lost both the flaps, we have lost one flap, but still we are able to get the oral seal with the rest uh, remaining one flap, but uh, the disadvantage being the bulk of the reconstruction is lost. So this traction suture for an initial period, it will maintain uh, any, it will impede, impede the movement of the tongue. So superficial dissection is the one which you slowly and patiently do uh, bluntly, not blindly. Uh, so this is the superficial fascia. As you can see, the fat globules differ in size between superficial fascia and deep fascia. The superficial fascia fat globules are very thin, whereas the deeper ones are very thick. This is the deep fascia which the artery is holding. From once we identify the superficial fascia and the perforators which are entering into the skin flap, then we proceed the dissection between the adipose tissue, then go up to the deep fascia where it pierces. From uh, once it pierces the deep fascia, then it will be straight forward dissection, dissecting the pedicle alone for the, the, for the amount of the required length which we need to anastomose in So this lady is also uh, diagnosed with CA tongue. See the amount of the thickness of thigh she is having. Uh, initially, we planned for a skip flap, uh, then we prepared both anterolateral thigh and skip flap. Then we uh, thought we'll give a try by giving exploratory incision and see for perforators. After giving incision, we could identify good sizable perforators superficially. Then we went and completed the dissection completely. This is the flap which we have put. So coming to the uh, main aims of reconstruction will be speech and swallowing versus volume and mobility. Mobility of the tongue will depend upon the uh, remnant of the tongue which is left behind because the flap which we are reconstruction will be adynamic. Uh, it cannot move, only the mobility will depend upon the what was left behind. And swallowing will depend on the volume and bulk which we restore because so that if there is good volume and bulk is provided, there will be good contact so the patient can have good uh, articulation and speech and also he will have good function during mastication and during initial preparatory phase of the foot bolus to, in the oral cavity. So that, and the wall bulk you should restore as much as needed and posteriorly so that it will direct the uh, fluids and the solids into the pharynx. So, uh, so to avoid always uh, tongue reconstruction, avoid putting very bulky flaps. Uh, even if you overcorrect and put uh, uh, very large volume flaps, postoperatively they will be having edema. So all the patients will tongue reconstruct will have tracheostomy. They might have problems. So always plan go for uh, thin flaps, super thin flaps and plan for two surfaces like dorsal and ventral, which have so far shown, and uh, correctly take the dimension and give some allowance for the volume so that post-operatively you are following for so many period, period uh, and the patient undergoes radiotherapy, therapy, they will have some diminution in volume and atrophy. So give some allowance for the more volume. 
So best reconstruction will be decided by the amount of the tongue which is left behind because that is only going to move and uh, move and your reconstructed tongue also. And this reconstruction should always facilitate movement for the patient. Uh, and always don't put any bulky flaps uh, which will prevent or restrict movement of the uh, tongue which is left behind. Uh, are you going to continue with this, uh, the next presentation, or we should uh, um, like continue the next one, sir? Or? I think, uh, Karthikeyan, what do you say? Yes, sir, he can continue, finish up the next presentation. Yeah, that, that, then we'll come. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. This is my second talk on uh, mid-phase reconstruction using uh, fibula osteocutaneous flap. So uh, maxilla being a polyhedron six wall structure, which is separated by central nasal area. It separates the oral cavity from the orbital cavity, which uh, waits in respiration, speech, mastication, swallowing, vision, and olfaction are important functions. So Can each of- Slide show. Each of this... Uh, put it, can you put it in the slideshow? Yes. Full screen. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes. Each of these thirds have important uh, functions uh, relating to them. The superior third where we have eye is having orbital floor protection and support. Zygoma gives us cheek protection and muscles of facial expression are attached to the middle third and nasal airway, nose having the support and aesthetics in the position, speech, uh, nasality and resonance, alveolar process in the lower third having dentition which is important for mastication, articulation, aesthetics and also for nutrition, proper intake and uh, deglutition. So classification is Santa Maria and Cordero classification which we follow where in type 1 only one or two walls are removed, the palate will be preserved. Type 2 will be subtotal where lower five walls will be removed. Orbital floor is preserved. Type 3 is again divided into A and B with resection of all six walls. A being contents are preserved, B being orbital contents are uh, removed. Type 4 is orbitomaxillectomy where uh, palate is preserved, the rest of the upper five walls are removed. So, goals to be achieved is we have to obliterate the defect, create a barrier between oral cavity and nasal cavity and restore the essential function which I have elaborated and adequate structural support to each of the mid facial units so, so that we can restore the aesthetics uh, of the external features of the face. So, so case one uh, where they have done the maxillectomy after redraping the skin the whole of the skin is getting uh, sunken in. So orbital contents were preserved. The lateral nasal wall is uh, removed and part of it is exposed. The soft palate, you can, the soft palate mar margin you can see, this is the alveolar effect. So we have planned for a fibula after marking perforators, three perforators we have marked. So this is the distal paddle, middle paddle and proximal paddle, each one having a single, single perforator. The, which is the pedicle which is shown here. So orbital floor, uh, floor we have supported with the titanium mesh and uh, the zygomatic maxillary buttress is reconstructed with the fibula. So as you see in this picture, the artery forcer is going into the, the light, light rostral and the lateral nasal wall is exposed. You should uh, provide lining and close this uh, nasal lining your flap uh, with your flap so that there should not be any communication with the nasal cavity to this mesh. Otherwise, the mesh can get 
infected or so the distal paddle which we have harvested with the fibula has been used to close the lateral nasal wall and uh, provide a cover for the uh, titanium mesh which was used for the sub so and the other uh, middle paddle went for the soft pellet this is the post immediate uh, on table post operative this is a uh, early post operative and of 10 days of time this is uh, almost uh, after one and a half years of follow uh, even though we have re re adequately replaced the volume over a period of time that volume is slowly gets atrophied and this area the uh, uh, skin is very thin and pliable Uh, they will start forming some depression or sinuses in this area with mesh being exposed so nowadays we are adequately taking some adiposal tissue and uh, with the flap and covering this orbital floor uh, titanium mesh which we are uh, using for the contents of support so this uh, another case where maxillectomy with the uh, lateral nasal wall is uh, removed here the orbital contents and the ring and the support is maintained this is a zygoma and this is the alveolar defect again a fibula flap with two skin paddles was uh, harvested and the zygomatic uh, maxillary buttress was recreated with the fibula and the one skin paddle went to went and closed the lateral nasal wall and other skin paddle for the oral cavity seal uh, this is post operative picture similarly again after a, for a period of time we also had loss loss of uh, volume here with the depression this is another case a similar uh, defect uh, contents are preserved uh, support is preserved and uh, alveolar uh, defect again a fibula with two skin paddles Uh, harvested fibula with two skin paddles with a uh, lot of adiposal tissue which was harvested so this buttress was recreated with the fibula and one skin paddle went to close the lateral nasal wall and other for the oral cavity the rest of the adiposal tissue was used as a filler to fill this cavity so adequate volume has been restored still the patient developed post operatively some sinus uh, some sinus in this area so then then we went again and recreated the defect this is the amount of skin which we required after recreation of the defect and this is the amount of uh, uh, volume or bulk which is required underneath the skin we to restore the required bulk so the fibula is intact with the plate then we have harvested the uh, thymeric alt flap based upon Three perforators, one for skin paddle, another for uh, skin paddle, and another small adipocapsule tissue with the perforator. So this is the final picture after reconstruction, which the one skin paddle when it came for the skin surface, and another when another piece of skin with adipocapsule tissue went inside. So this is another case where uh, complete. upper alveolus is dissected with uh, loss of palate uh, again a fibula flap to two skin paddles is done for both the uh, external skin cover and inside the uh, um, buttress is recreated sorry but not an upper alveolus is recreated with the fibula and one skin paddle went for the uh, inside oral lining and another one for outer cover so defects after uh, mid phase and maxillectomy are uh, complex in nature they can both they can be bony defects and few uh, soft tissue defects so we have mainly restored uh, follow the principles and restore aesthetics and uh, functional restoration should be achieved and the defects can be broadly categorized into simple soft tissue and complex bony defects simple defects you can reconstruct with soft tissue pre plans but uh, complex defects involving the bone mm -hmm. which involves the pre maxilla or uh, uh, half of the upper alveolus or more than hemi palate you should reconstruct with osteocutaneous pre plans so zygomatic maxillary buttress has to be reconstructed 
to restore the facial aesthetics so that big face projects is uh, maintained and the, for a period of time the skin should not uh, sunken or uh, get depressed so if the inner adequate support uh, adequate support if not maintained for the alpha growth can lead to enough calmness dystopia and dystopia so in all these cases we have used titanium mesh was used to support the contents and uh, once on any primary osteo integration once all the flaps have settled secondary osteo integration with implants can significantly improve the mid face reconstruction and the aesthetics providing good uh, dentition and uh, mastication for the patient so implant bone process can be used for uh, dental and uh, orbital rehabilitation so to conclude the recent advances now uh, have been mentioned like 3d reconstruction and uh, printing of processes and uh, with the cutting guide techniques uh, are we are able to achieve the our goal with all of our uh, aims within within reasonable time frame so fibula has uh, have emerged as a flap of choice if there is a bony defect and reconstruction and uh, you have to adequately follow the algorithm to achieve your final function in aesthetics when doing the mid face reconstruction thank you great um, excellent uh, uh, coverage of two um, uh, good topics so let me just look at the chats you you are stopping share yeah great so let me look at the the questions my my yeah one minute uh yeah uh there was a question uh yeah the first one i would take it uh, dr rajan how will you prevent the fall back and airway obstruction after total glossectomy surgery uh, we have to do a laryngeal suspension sir we take yeah. a suspension stitch to the larynx and attach it to the uh, mandible so that the tongue the reconstructed tongue should not fall back and uh, impair obstruction i uh, know see um, i will come to that again i will take the next question from shelva Uh, also similar one very good presentation in one of your case total reconstruction you had two paddles with suture alone on both sides how do you insert the buccal surface to the mandible and this is the same one that if you look at the previous question also the laryngeal uh, suspension sutures will keep the larynx up for your swallowing but the question is how do you prevent the reconstructed tongue going back you know it is going to fall back so shelva's question is same is how do you anchor it to the mandible because it is covered if you are coming you have put it like this so how do you anchor to the mandible the, uh, the paddle will be anchored to the the gingiva among along the floor of mouth uh, the gingiva which was left to the mandible so you have an anterior uh, you know there is a free margin to that free that margin. is anchored to that yes sir okay. do you anchor with the uh, with the uh, i mean to the teeth or to the mucosa or to the drill bone in the uh, drill hole in the bone some case for some surgeons they remove the entire mucosa yeah in those cases we do interdental stitching interdental okay to remove the film if they remove if they preserve the mucosa we go and anchor it to the mucosa Okay. Some cases, if we have the dentition problems, we make drill holes in the mandible and take stitch through the mandible. So I think it answers. Shelva, if you are not happy, send uh, another question. Yeah, if you are not happy with the answer. So Ravi Chandran, for simple defects, can we use lateral arm flap? Yes, sir. Can be used. even you know, the earlier slides which i have shown from radial forearm they have been using but the problem will be the bulk will not be there if we compare the later arm the pedicle length will be very short we can get maximum 5 to 7 cm that from the tongue reaching it to the neck vessels it will be very difficult so yeah. the, so either radial forearm 
you can have a very long pedicle and DLT also you can get a reasonable pedicle. But uh, doing a later lamb for a tongue defect might be a difficult. The reaching the pedicle length reaching to the neck will be very difficult. Okay, okay, I think that answers that question. So lateral lamb, uh, personally uh, speaking, I would say that we have been using lateral lamb for a long time. Uh, we had, uh, in fact, published a paper also. We have, we were tradition in you know, fans of lateral palm, um, flap because it fits in that lateral defect so well, yes. and the quality of this so good, much better than the radial forearm or ALT. But you are right, the dissection. In fact, uh, if you are not uh, really competent with the lateral arm dissection, you can, uh, uh, you know, you can mismanage the veins. And so the particular length is a problem. Problem. It's a problem. Now, Umar, Umar Farooq has asked, what measure we should take to avoid skin giving up or sagging at upper end? I didn't understand that question. I didn't get that question properly. I also didn't. Uh, what measure we should take to avoid skin giving up or sagging at the upper end? We will leave it if the question comes. Oh, it was uh, regarding maxilla. Okay, uh, let us take that later. Uh, Selva has uh, put a rejoinder that there was no ray, raw area in the flap to insert to the margin. That's what he is saying. Ventral surface has a raw area, sir, which goes to the, the, the mucosa, which is preserved along the mandible surface. Shelva, I think uh, what uh, they were doing that, see, you have this flap coming like that. This is the raw area here. Yes, so sir. this is cut and uh, you know, put it there. So it sticks from the mandible like that. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Now, uh, I had a question about uh, the total tongue reconstruction you did. Yes, sir. About that, that shape of the flap is excellent. Yes, no, the ventral surface and dorsal surface. Uh, yes, that concept is very good. Thin flaps getting there. Yes, um, for, how do you prevent it from sagging inside into the? There is no diaphragm. You are removing the entire floor of mouth diaphragm. Yes, so you didn't show the poster picture uh, in that. That's why I'm curious. How did you? prevent it from sagging inside into the into the thing because it sinks down most of the times anything uh, the patient post up i didn't have that's why yeah I didn't yeah, yeah but initial uh, for first 40 to 70 hours we maintain with the traction suture yeah yeah once the it settles for a period of time, it should, but uh, eventually all the flaps will have uh, go for a loss of volume and atrophy and it will sink. Yeah, I think for total tongue, that is the issue. That is the issue. Whatever flap you put, ALT, huge ALT, which touches the palate, later on you find that it has gone down considerably. Yes, and then uh, there have been described uh, reports of using the gracilis or uh, rectus or even the rectus uh, abdominis or even the rectus femoris to f uh, act as a diaphragm between the mandible and then put the skin paddle on that. But I think total glossectomy, as you have shown, uh, is extremely difficult uh, proposition. But your concept of this uh, ventral and dorsal surface is excellent. And if you can get a thin flap like that, it might be good. It, might, it is a good, good concept. There, there is no other. Ah, yeah. Uh, Kartigain has asked, "Will there be any sensation to the reconstructed tongue?" In, in this reconstruction tongue, we are not harvesting any uh, nerve with the flap and doing any anastomosis in the neck. But over a period of time, there will be some kind of protective sensation will be regained in the flaps. If you do see the data also uh, in the various papers. The same thing they mentioned, but the patient sensation of the uh, taste uh, will depend upon what is left behind, the uh, the remnant of the existing tongue which is left behind, and uh, and also on the other uh, taste buds which are present in other area of the body. 
So this uh, reconstruction of tongue, we have not done any uh, neural neural effort to get the sensation. Yeah, if I can add to that, the sensory flaps were described with the radial forearm flaps yes, sir, when when it came and when it came. Most of us also practice that. And there was some amount of sensory taste. I mean, sensory return, touch and uh, return. But uh, most of the papers which subsequently came did not show any improvement in the quality of uh, function of the tongue. So I think even though it is inviting to take a cutaneous nerve along the radial forearm, nobody ever practices as much. But uh, later, the other flaps, I think no flaps has been reported to be used as the sensate flap, AT and uh, lateral arm or any of the other flaps, which has come in medial, you know, the sural uh, artery flap or a profunda flap. Nothing has been used as a sensate flap. Now, coming to the next one. Yes, that's... one more question. Yeah, yeah. Can I just read out the question, yeah. sir? Yeah. From Dr. Yeah. Ankatramani, it's come yeah. to my chat box. Ah. Tongue reconstruction, do you match the defect and design the flap or do you design the flap based on the specimen, especially in soft tissue disease? He says, in bony reconstruction like mandible, you can take it from the specimen to reconstruct. So yeah. he wants to in soft tissue reconstruction, do you design it with the defect or do you design it with the specimen? Excellent question. Uh, Hari? Sir, we have to take account into the both defect we have to see and also the specimen we have to see. In this technique, we are uh, taking the dimensions uh, from the resected specimen, the exact dimensions of the specimen, both dorsal surface and ventral surface. But uh, if you see the specimen, as I mentioned, uh, sometimes the resection can go past the retromolar trigone and uh, go up to the lateral pharyngeal wall. But if you see the specimen, and take it like that, you cannot get exact uh, template which is required. So always you should see both the defect and the specimen. And in few cases which I've shown, the ventral surface of the flap has got an extension, which is going into the, the precarious area to have, to prevent post-operative salivary leakage. So both the defect we have to take it account and also the specimen we have to take it account. And post-operatively, after a period of time, there will be some loss of volume and uh, there will be atrophy because of radiotherapy. So always give some adequate tolerance to give extra bulk and volume when you reconstruct. Um, yeah, that is, I think, uh, right uh, way. I would say, uh, you know, both, uh, both have fallacies. If you measure the defect, usually bigger than what is because it you know retracts whereas the specimen contracts so shrinks so both have its own problems but the safer way i would say is the specimen because most of the time when you do it you over correct it you know your flap is always bigger than what is needed mostly so when you have that specimen correctly measured and uh, put it in the flap, your usual inherent method of um, inherent uh, mistake of overcorrection is corrected by that. I'm not, I'm just, this is a general principle. There's nothing, don't be dogmatic about it. But uh, uh, the, if you measure the defect, which we all do many times, it will be overcorrection. But uh, your way of looking at the specimen and uh, putting it, maybe it is right because the specimen has shrunken and then your flap is slightly bigger than what is, you know, what is needed, which which will be, which will be fitting. How much of, uh, how much of contraction? Who is the? Have you checked the volume of the flap uh, with this uh, dorsal and ventral surface after radiation? How do they behave after radiation? Do they, um, you know, have a bit more? A tethered look because of the weight to the shrink? A uh, little bit shrinkage will be there, sir. But following this technique, both dorsal and ventral surface, we are matching the epithelial surface, what was lost, and also providing adequate bulk. So in all those 
post operative cases which are shown was almost after radiotherapy and one and a half years to two years follow so they have not lost that much amount of bulk but still they have maintaining the protrusion of the tongue mobility and speech is good which is intelligible now shall we move on to the maxilla now yeah uh, there was one question dr umar farooq uh, had uh, asked how will you uh, you know that uh, sagging let me go to the question regarding the maxilla uh, how how we should take what measure do should you take to avoid skin sagging or giving up i mean retraction maybe yeah see one of your show, uh, pictures showed that uh, it was going up yes, and many times you find that the flap sags down yes sir this uh, this skin flap which the onco surgeon they elevate they elevate with pottery very thin sometimes and post operatively if on table it might look uh, perfect but uh, as you follow post operatively slowly it will show problems of congestion and over a period of time it will go and sunken in so while doing reconstruction you take adequate amount of adipose tissue based upon a separate perforator and cover your uh, titanium mesh which is used for supporting the orbital contents and with that our uh, adipose patient tissue you cover your mesh adequately and provide adequate bulk underneath the skin flap so that this can be prevented the shrinkage of skin or sunkening can be somehow prevented even though we have done for all those cases post operatively still they have this uh, sunkening or depression at uh, one point one area where they may end up in showing the mesh which we have reconstructed so in that one particular case which i have shown we have went in again and did a anterolateral thigh flap to replace the, again the volume and the skin which is uh, required for the skin no so, uh, i'll read out a comment on this by selva yes, the infra one comment the infra orbital skin flap necrosis shrinkage also depends upon the thickness of the flap the onco surgeon raise which you mentioned just now yes, and the amount of cautery use that is the distalmost portion of the skin and if the superficial temporal artery is injured or cut adds to the ischemia so it's a general comment i think it is acceptable comment yes, which you also agreed now um, you had shown you know i think that dr umar's uh, query was whether is it a sagging in the palatal area i'm not sure what he asked so maybe uh, do, can you enlighten us on the correct tension where you put that palate you know palatal skin palatal skin also we take uh, dermal suspension stitch sir so that uh, it will be anchored to any of the uh, bone bony either to the zygom or reconstructed fibula so that yeah the flap cannot uh, sag into the oral cavity so we take the dermal suspension stitch and anchor it to the reconstructed fibula or the plate which we have used okay um other thing like uh, there is no other question on that maxilla is there anything dr kartika in any 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 no sir i think it? that's the there are no more questions on the maxilla maxilla you want to add your own uh, comments sir like yeah to... now you know see a uh, few couple of things about the maxilla which are uh, showing it's excellent that uh, you know maxilla is being reconstructed like that uh the orbital part is one which orbital support is something is always debated is it right to do a mesh is it right to give um, a bone strut or a temporalis coronoid flap is another one which you can use for the orbital support uh out of the three things mesh is the easiest and best in a way to give the support because contouring is good but the problem with the mesh is again 
all these patients undergo radiation and then there is a high chance of extrusion of the mesh which is very high chance and that it can occur in the medial world which uh, hari was trying to prevent it by putting the nasal one one closure on the nasal uh, wall uh, other one is in the infraorbital area which i think one of those patients uh, which had a uh, extrusion i don't know whether it had a mesh or not whatever is that that is the area which it comes out so uh, if i i use a mesh in our unit i would suggest that we will we will not go really medially into the nasal cavity we will stop short slightly away because we don't use that nasal flap on that side we are using it but mostly it sacks down it is extremely difficult you design beautifully it doesn't fit really well there it but i compliment uh, you know uh, and uh, hari and uh, and uh, and uh, shuram and or to get it right it is extremely difficult to get that third piece of skin in that nasal wall really right so if you if you are not comfortable put the mesh off bit more laterally as well as don't allow it to come anteriorly too much in the rim and the problem with this one is you have to have lot of soft tissue supporting the mesh from below also so that it is not exposed anywhere so using a fibula it can be a problem because it is exposed there is air inside that you know that area so that is a problem but it's a difficult thing putting a fibular strut there is it is easily said than done because you are to get the real contour in the orbital floor with a fibular bone is not very easy if you do 10 cases five might be right five might won't be right so mesh is the easier one uh again what we have been doing of late is put a small strut of bone of fibula and put a mesh behind that small mesh behind that because fibula will never never has a surface enough to support the entire flow so anteriorly the bone comes in the medial to uh, lateral to medial side a small strut and a small mesh behind which will uh, will be i i cannot uh, vouch for that in a big way because the number of cases are not that big but that is it is a unsolved sort of issue rest is all fine i think fibula is the choice now with most of the people go see easy easier to do even though dcaa and scapula has been proposed by some groups and some people still do it but uh, we all have been sticking to fibula because of the uh, one main reason is the excellent pedicle length any anything else one more question sir from yeah. dr venkat tota yeah uh, the question is what are the common post operative reconstruction problems following pre op radiation oh uh hari uh, like uh, see i would say that word pre op radiation is not the right thing to use because nobody uses if it is a pre op radiation it is planned radiation planned radiation is always a low dose and you plan the radiation and then do the surgery which is seldom seldom done so now what is meant here is the salvage situation the patients had a full blast of radiation as a treatment but the patient has had a disease recurrence or a persistence of disease or recurrence so it is a salvage type of surgery reconstruction so i will ask hadi views on that salvage reconstruction difficulty will be uh, uh, will be the because of radiotherapy there will be damage to the existing skin which will be difficult to, while, while raising the flap there will be tissue edema and also if the neck is also irradiated there will be difficulty in having uh, getting a good sizable vessels for anastomosis 
in that cases we have to go for opposite side for uh, doing an anastomosis and uh, from reconstruction point of view whatever is lost we have to restore either it will be uh, by by component wise either it can be bony or soft tissue or skin whatever is lost we have to replace it adequately uh, what is the problem will be getting bezel wise it will be difficult if you can good bezels on the same side you, you will be lucky then in other case we have to go for the opposite side for getting an anastomosis good bezels yeah i think you covered uh, most of the issues with that one further to that the only thing you know it depends upon what type of recurrence is it is it a very bad one secondly what is the duration of the radiation free interval i mean what is the when when did the radiation finish if it is immediately uh, surgery is being done it is disaster if it is delayed again disaster because of intense fibrosis but i agree fully to what hadi said vessels are a problem skin healing is a problem but it doesn't pre- 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 code it is not a general statement that free flaps cannot be done it's not that you can do it but with caution and in selected cases where it is indicated but i would opt for a safe flap don't be fancy reconstructions choose a safe flap like a radial forearm or a alt or something like that any questions remaining i didn't see anything in the chat box something yes sir i think that's all so there are no more questions no more questions so we conclude any anybody in the in the in the seniors in the you know anybody gautam is there is it I gautam gautam sir is not there no dr sridhar dr balakrishnan dr chandran yeah anybody has to add anything before we conclude sir sridhar sir no no Yes, Dr. Anthony Arvind want to say something. And and Anthony is there, Anto. Where is he? Can't see him. Shivram is there. Um, Karthik, I must compliment you, man. I mean, I, I haven't had the opportunity to tell you. Thank you. You've done a wonderful job. Can you can you uh, st- uh, switch on your video? Just on my video, I'm not presentable. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean I, I must compliment you and uh, I I think um um Subhu covered everything yeah. Subhu was spot on I mean shows how experienced he is in what he's doing and he was there telling you everything that went on I mean, nothing to really I don't really I think I do agree that mid face reconstruction is the most difficult cardiac reconstruction and there is no easy answer and uh, every bit of it every bit of the part of the maxilla has a controversy in how it's being reconstructed totally agree totally agree with what subhu had to say that you know everything has its own positives and negatives um my my important the important point that i might want to give away to many of the youngsters who are here and listening to it is what we have tried to do is try to recreate the defect and that must become a primary motive really primary motive should be map the map the defect map the defect try and reconstruct every small bit of it it might be difficult early but later on it'll just be cake walk you can do it very well you can get good reconstructions so thank you wonderful wonderful opportunity for hadi to show off what he does and uh, excellent kapti and uh, and subhu thanks yes yes great shivram no is muted okay oh shivram has sent a message i don't have a camera so please excuse him excuse me okay sir yeah he has written good job kartik and i don't have a camera okay great it's not <laughs> muted <laughs>
desktop has no mic either okay <laughs> okay, so, okay. Okay. Uh, okay that's all uh, yeah, you, thank you sir please do please yeah yeah thank you so much sir sir i as i said uh, just earlier today being krishna jayanti it was nice coincidental that we had two krishnas presenting today the younger generation yeah. of uh, plastic surgeons of tomorrow uh, making great presentations uh, dr shamnath krishna pandian and dr hari krishna thank you both of you thank and you. Uh, dr subramanya here sir i really am very happy, happy that you we got you in here to moderate these sessions and uh, we we been benefited by your opinion and your uh, comments and your observations thank you so much sir and uh, we look forward to interacting with you again more and uh, as far as the great yeah sir nice. uh, as far as the program is Then I think the success of the program is mainly in a big part to the presenters and the moderator, and even more important are the participants. Especially we've had very senior participants in every program, Dr. Shridhar sir, Dr. G B sir, Balakrishnan sir, and uh, we've had other people today. Uh, Dr. T C Chandran sir has been there, and Dr. Venkat Tota from Hyderabad, Dr. Gautam Bishwas was there. Uh, doctor and uh, Doctor Shivaram and Anthony. Do Doctor Shivaram was quiet and eating cedars. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was great. And uh, before we wind up, I would just like to show you uh, what is expected next week in the next episode. Just give me a moment. I'll share my screen. Yeah, the next episode, episode six on eighteen eight next Tuesday. we we'll have two speakers again first speaker is dr s suja who will be talking on points to ponder in breast reduction and the moderator will be dr milind wag from mumbai and the second speaker would be dr somesh balakrishnan speaking on use of technology in managing difficult wounds and the moderator would be dr b b narayana murthy from chennai so the whole thing is to uh, based on the motto to learn to contribute and to encourage thank you all for participating in this program great thank you bye good night sir good night good night good night sir good night, sir. Good night.